How's it going, everybody? Brent Alvarez and Dave Meltzer here, Wrestling Observer Radio. It is March 19, 2024, figure4online.com slash wrestlingobserver.com. We've got a lot of news to talk about here today, including, Dave, you just got finished watching some New Japan Cup. Yeah, yeah, they had the semifinals, which were held today. Um, Yoda Suji beat Evil, and um, Hiroki Goto beat Sonata, so it's going to be Suji and go to win the finals which are Wednesday in Nagaoka and um it's interesting because they really position Goto as the sentimental favorite they talked about his father passing away and how he promised to win the trophy and bring it to his father and then he then go for the championship and and bring that to his father so they're really playing on that hard which um you know makes me think that he may have a shot at winning the thing. I mean, if you just looked at it, um, you know, without that, you would go like it's Yoda Suji. You know, they need to get somebody. I mean, when when your business when your business is doing great, you know, I mean, a lot of people are always always talk about things like, oh, you know, you don't want to rush it or anything like that. When your business is doing great, the idea of you don't want to rush it is fine. When your business is doing bad, um, you need to make the move. Um, with somebody new and um, you know like but New Japan I mean you can tell just with the whole thing like with Narita and Umino and everybody it's like they're still going at their normal pace and the business isn't picking up and Suji is the most charisma but I also can see that that I don't know that they want to do Naito and, and Suji you know stable mates this early in the game so I think that uh, there's a real good chance of Goto winning, actually. Um, they could go with Suji. I mean, that would be like if you went in before the tournament and go like, you know, who would be the leading picks? Um, Suji would probably have been the number one guy that you would think of unless you went with, you know, Zack Sabre, somebody who's, um, you know, or, you know, somebody like that who is always there and all that, or David Finley who, you know, and who knows where David Finley ended up being eliminated because he got sick, but David Finley's also... Um, I mean, David Finley could have been the guy, too. So, um, well, um, but, you know, fate took him out of it, I guess. So, um, anyway, the Suji and Evil match was like every Evil match. I mean, the only thing, you know, that made it better, I guess, is that Suji won. But, I mean, you had ref bump after ref bump. You had interference. Um, you know, it was like uh, everybody from... Uh, um, you know, House of Torture, including Jack Perry, Yujiro, Kanemaru, Dick Togo. Um, you know, they were all in all the time, constantly interfering. Um, there was a deal where um, Bushi and Hiromu uh, came in to try to make the save a couple times, you know, but they got overwhelmed. Finally, Shingo Takagi came in and he cleaned house on everybody. So, um, you know, that kind of like uh set up the thing the crowd was pretty into it though because they'd been they'd been watching uh evil you know do this stuff the whole tournament and it was just kind of like they finally you know when they when the heel group finally gets come up and says you know the crowd is going to get into it they were pretty hot for the ending portion um but i mean it was annoying you know you can only do so many ref bumps in a match and so much outside interference before it goes from heat to just like the uh, you know turn off heat i guess you know and it was well past that point but i think that the the fact that shingo takagi was absolutely great when he did his comeback and, and shingo takagi was eliminated by the house of torture so he had his like revenge thing there as well so it you know he had that and then uh go to sonata was basically a good match very very good last five minutes or so you know with all the near falls and everything and Crowd was very into it. They both wrestled very well. It wasn't like anything super spectacular, but it was, you know, solid, strong wrestling. And um, so anyway, yeah, go to Insuji. Um, probably not a pick that a lot of people would have had for the tournament final. But, you know, it's um, their tournament is unpredictable, whether that's good or bad. I guess in this situation, I mean, Suji being there is good. Goto being there has a story, so it's not bad. Yesterday we were talking about Mark Coleman, and the update yesterday was that he had been released from the hospital, but then ended up not feeling well, went back, and was diagnosed with pneumonia. 
And the update today is he's out of the hospital and in the gym. Yeah, he was in the gym today. Um, looked pretty, you know, like he was weak, but he was just, I think he was very happy to be in the gym. So, yeah, it's good. I mean, out of the hospital. Um, it wasn't like he was like, you know, working out hard or anything like that. He was more coaching. Um, but he was there. So, um, you know, good for him. Um, I mean, anything, as long as he's out of the hospital and, and you know, certainly not at death's door or anything like that anymore. And, um, I mean, it's, it's, it's a great recovery. I mean, you know, I mean, whatever it was, Tuesday, Wednesday, I mean, it was, it was touch and go if he was going to make it. And now he's, you know, if, if you're, if you're at, at death's door and six days later you're in the gym coaching, I think that's a pretty good recovery. So Matt Hardy was at Raw? Matt Hardy was at Raw with his wife, and they posted a video. I mean, him being at Raw, you know, he lives in, in Cameron, which isn't far from Raleigh. Um, I mean, it's it's his area. Him going to Raw is not really a big deal. Um, posting the video, you know, kind of changes it a little bit. His contract with AEW is coming due as well. So um, There's actually been a lot of the uh, the back and forth of late. Because I think Bailey was there for ba- Sasha's debut, ba- and Bailey and Tamina and um, and um, uh, what's her name, um, Naomi. But but they didn't they didn't post video. Well, no, that's but a, but the point is like it, it's it's not frowned upon to be there. Oh no, no, in the not crowd at, all. at this point. Oh no, 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 no. But it never it never was. I mean, Britt Baker would go when when Adam Cole was in NXT. She was at shows, and Adam Cole was at AEW shows when he was in NXT. So I mean, that's not. Um, that's not that's not necessarily a big deal. The posting of the video is is a bigger deal, you know, because then it's kind of like a slap in the face at your own company. I think in a lot of ways, um, if you're doing that. We have the opponent for Shayna Baszler at the Bloodsport show over WrestleMania weekend. Masha Slamovich, who of course, uh, former Impact Women's Champion, and uh, seems like you know WWE's got. Um, they're 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 cool with TNA, and so you know we've had TNA people appearing in the Royal Rumble. Shane has gotten the okay to work somebody from TNA for a GCW show, so uh, it's a much different world now than it was, you know, however long ago when yeah. Vince was. In I mean, the the interesting thing about the Bloodsport show is that they have um, wrestlers from um, New Japan. They have wrestlers from. AEW, they have wrestlers from WWE, they have wrestlers from TNA, you know, all on the same show, which is, uh, like, again, very, um, you know, I mean, it, again, it, it it was interesting only that, that Baszler's on a show that, and again, it's, it, it's Johnny TV, who's not necessarily, like, what one would call, like, someone who's, but I mean, he's still, I mean, he's an AEW wrestler, you know, I mean, whether he's, um, you know, getting the focal point of pushes or he's on pay-per-views or whatever, he's still an AEW guy. And he's in the main event against uh, Josh Barnett. And then um, Mike Bailey is wrestling um, Nick Nemeth um, on the show as well. So it's, um, you know, and Mike Bailey is, you know, TNA guy and, and Nick Nemeth is a New Japan guy and a TNA guy. So you got people from, and the show sold out, by the way. So, um, you know, it's, you know, I mean, I could see like, Baszler, I, I mean, I don't know how prevalent this is going to be, how many t- people WWE is going to allow to do stuff. Um, I know that there's shows that um, people have, that, that um, have wanted AEW talent and been turned down for that week as well. So um, I think that the rules kind of, it's kind of like the rules of like what you can say in interviews. They change based on who you are. We'll talk, <laughs> we'll talk about Cody tonight. And actually, Masha was never a singles champion. She was a two-time tag team champion for uh, yeah for impact all right uh we got triple mania coming up i believe uh, april 27th is the date this is yeah, the monterey uh, baseball stadium the first sh- one of the three yep show in monterey and we've got a uh a full lineup for the show and uh if i can find it here well, alberto El patron and nick nemeth is for the triple a mega title right vikingo vacated the title since he's having knee surgery so they announced that um this would have been on um the show over the weekend in uh, Mexico City. And then they had a match with Alberto, Cibernetico, and um, God, I forgot who else. Um, but it was a match where the winner would, um, I think Psycho Clown was in the match too. The winner would, would um, go to um, Triple Mania and face somebody who ended up being Nick Nemeth. 
um, for the vacant championship. So, um, you know, Alberto is certainly a controversial character, but he's back. And they're doing a retro, you know, the whole thing in, in AAA this year. And it's done well for business. They had a nice, a, a, a 90% full one day Liberera gym, um, second time back, the first time they sold out. So, um, you know, they're, they're doing healthy numbers there right now by bringing back, you know, Cybernetica was really, really over. They had, um, you know, a lot of guys from the past. They brought back Super Calo, um, who's certainly seen his better days. You know, the, the one from WCW in the 90s, Oscar Sevilla, um, um, Charlie Manson, um, just a lot of the, um, Heavy metal, Pimpinella, Escarlata. Pimpinella, Pimpinella actually got over pretty big too. Yeah, yeah. Vampiro, who's doing Vampiro a retirement tour, is once again wrestling. He's doing a retirement tour this year. Um, I think it's this decade. Um, I just remember when the first time Vampiro told me he was retiring, and it was in fact, I'm going to say 2000 ish. It was when he was in WCW, and he said he was retiring because he had uh, too many concussions, and there was no way he could continue to wrestle. And here we are, 24 years later, and he's doing another retirement tour. Um, I expect that he will be doing retirement tours as long as Terry Funk did. And, man, we've got uh, Nemeth everywhere because he's doing AAA New Japan. He's doing Bloodsport. Nick Nemeth and Mike Bailey yeah, is the yeah. match there. And uh, that'll be an, that'll be an interesting. That'll, you know, Bloodsport's like is 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 interesting because it's a totally different style. Oh, you don't and, say. So you, Who is so, Josh Barnett's opponent on this show? Johnny TV. Johnny Johnny Bloodsport. John Johnny Hennigan. Bloodsport. Yeah, John Johnny Bloodsport. Right. John Hennigan against Josh Barnett. Yeah, as a Bloodsport. Well, you know, um, um, Johnny TV. John Hennigan. I mean, he he did do boxing matches. I mean, he's a he's a talented guy. Sure. You know, I mean, he's a great athlete. Um, obviously, nobody beats Josh Barnett in Bloodsport, probably. Um, you know, I mean, even even uh, John Moxley lost to Josh Barnett in Bloodsport. Yeah. All right. Uh, what else do we have here today? Let's talk about the uh, the ratings. SmackDown. Well, you know, we talked about it. You know, the the Rock opened the show three weeks ago, and then uh, he closed the show last week, and the show did much better when he closed the show. Mm-hmm. And then he went back to opening the show this week, and show was down. So a little bit, a little bit. Um. I mean, um, it was uh, 0.68. Last week was 0.69. Um, but the total viewers were down, uh, about 100,000, um, probably for that very reason. I mean, the first the first half hour was up, um, you know, and then it fell down a little bit. But I don't have the quarters, but um, I would, uh, you know, I've seen the half hours. And, you know, it's exactly what you would expect. Um, you know, I mean, when you... The whole show is built around him, and he's out first. You know, you're gonna people are gonna tune out when he's uh, off the show. Um, I mean, still, I mean, it's interesting because, like, you know, as far as total viewers go, the two million three hundred forty thousand. I mean, that's a number that they were doing before they had The Rock. So it's it's kind of, I would say, disappointing. I mean, we are starting to get into. Um, I mean, the NCAA basketball tournament isn't on, but the um, but there were you know uh, conference tournaments. There was a lot of stuff there, so it was a uh, it was tougher competition than usual. But not like um, none of none of the games did monster numbers, but there were a lot of games on. So um, you know the competition's been a little bit tougher. But you know, I mean, I mean, it, the, the real reason is is because they put them on first. I mean, that's that's the reason that it was down a little bit from before. And uh, AW did three hundred twenty seven thousand and zero point one one, and you know, I mean, they were going against you know, the basketball everywhere. So it probably knocked him down and it's still rampage. You know I mean? Rampage is the show that you can miss if you're going to miss a show because it's the C show, you know, even though, you know, they did have a really good match with commander and Takeshita. By the way, I saw the Takeshita match with Yuma Yuyagi also from um, the DDT show yesterday. And uh, it's a hell of a match. It's a hell of a match. It wasn't, um, I wouldn't, call it like match of the year but i mean as far as um i i would say it was probably the best match i've seen this week i mean it i i would it was more um you know i mean danielson and shibata was was better in some ways 
Um, I mean, there was a smoothness to Danielson Sonata that, that, I mean, uh, Shibata that, uh, the match didn't have, but this was the hard hitting back and forth, very good heat. Um, two top guys, you know, going against each other in a big, big match. And, um, you know, obviously all the big moves that were, you know, on both sides. Uh, Takeshita is just very, very impressive in, in the match, and as was Ayoyagi. So, um, yeah, they, um, you know, he's, uh, Takeshita's everywhere, too. Any other ratings notes? Um, and I mean, there's nothing really big, you know, as far as I, you know, I don't have a lot of the, the details. SmackDown was first, uh, for the night. Um, Rampage was 28th, which is lower than they usually were, and, and I believe, uh, Sixth in the time, six in the time slot. So it was lower than usual because of all the basketball. I mean, the only thing that, that it only got beat by basketball and on patrol live, and on patrol live didn't beat it by much. Um, so it's um, you know, it's about what you would expect when you consider the competition and everything like that. And uh, get the collision number tomorrow, and uh, and the raw number probably tomorrow too. Um, you know, Raw will be what it'll be next week. Well, no, it's two weeks from. Well, next week's Raw will have Punk, and you know he's a good draw, so that probably will help. And then the week after, we'll have Rock for the first time on Raw in a long, long time. Uh, so that'll help too. Um, so and that'll lead him right up to Mania. All right, uh, but uh, but, yes. uh, but they are you know now already. Um, you know, a lot of these shows are going to be going against NCAA basketball, and that's. Uh, you know, as that tournament goes, and men's and women's, women's are going to be, there's going to be some big ratings at when the women's tournament um, with certain teams, especially when they get down to the finals. This is probably the hottest women's uh, college basketball has ever been, maybe, or certainly been in years and years um, with Caitlin Clark and everything like that. So um, the competition, um, you know, is uh, is going to be tougher for, for everyone that goes against either a men's or 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 a major women's uh, game and and um, Saturday's the NCAA wrestling Saturday Saturday that the ESPN's running NCAA wrestling at seven the finals they're actually going to be on ESPN Thursday Friday Saturday um, with the wrestling the Saturday uh, is the finals and then it will lead into the UFC which is going to run right after so that's how they're programming uh, Saturday night. And uh, tomorrow it is a dark side of the ring on Terry Gordy. Yeah, I'm interested in it. Um, I watched uh, the the first two. The John Tenta one was very good, by the way, uh, the first week. Um, just showed him to be a really nice guy. And, uh, you know, um, they had his family on. They, were, they, they came up very, very well. And, you know, just kind of a tragedy that uh, John died, you know, at such a young age from cancer. And then... Um, Last week was Buff Bagwell, and that was somewhat controversial. There was a lot of stuff there that I didn't know, but, uh, you know, the basics were all covered. And then Terry Gordy, who, you know, I watched pretty much his whole career from when he was a teenager. He was actually supposed to come to California. I remember they build they build him as this uh, 6'6", 300-pound Terry Gordy coming to the Cow Palace, and he never came because um, he was probably like 16 at the time, and, and they probably couldn't license him. Um, so he was wrestling in the South. I mean, he started wrestling when he was 13 and he would have been a really good high school football player, but he was, you know, doing pro wrestling all through high school. And then he hooked up with Michael Hayes and they went to, uh, they, they hooked up in, I believe, Alabama or Mississippi. I think it, was, I mean, it might have been Mississippi, went to Memphis, but really hit it big in Mid South in 1980. And the guy was like main eventing a major promotion at, at 19, which, and he wasn't the son of a wrestler. And he was a great, he was just a great natural worker. I mean, um, you know, from his, his knees were starting to act up, um, when he was in his thirties because he had started at 13 and worked that full schedule and everything. But he was, he was just like a, a, a great, great worker. One of the best workers of his size, um, of that era. You know, I mean, you know, probably really as a worker better than Stan Hansen. Um, you know, as far as that type of a guy and, um, better than Steve Williams, you know, as far as, 
you know, his tag team partner. I mean, he was the better worker of the two for sure. And then he had the um, overdose and obviously was never the same and, and died young, you know, at uh, 40-ish. I think, he, I think he was 40 when he died um, around the same time as um, uh, there's a couple of people who died all around the same time. Um, but, yeah, too, um, too young and everything like that. But, um, man, like when he was when he was in his prime that guy was could do it all you know i mean he could he had the talent to be a world champion and i mean he was he was triple crown champion in all japan and uh and that was a pretty major championship at the time and tag team champion with uh steve williams multiple times they wrestled you know in those tag team tournaments in all japan that was the that, and that was the best wrestling in the world at the time against you know misawa and kawada and all the different various teams with hansen and uh, Saruta and, and uh, Akira Tawe first, and then it was Kawada and Tawe and Masao and Kobashi. And then, you know, it would have gone for years and years and years. But uh, when he had the overdose, it was like that was it. He could he could still function and he could still wrestle kind of. But, you know, it just the fire was gone at that point. And WWE brought him in to feud with Undertaker, you know, oh. years later as the executioner. That and, was a um, disaster. Yeah, I, I don't. I, it was weird because I had no no idea. I mean, the everyone knew that you know he was he was gone. You know, I mean, he just couldn't do it, and I don't know what it was. I mean, it's just like I I guess somehow they thought that somehow magically the Undertaker would turn him into Terry Gordy again, and then they put him under a mask as the Executioner. So the weird part of it is is like any notoriety that would have saved him, like Cornette used him. But he, at least he used him as Terry Gordy, and he couldn't really. And 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 Heyman did too, um, you know. Brought him in for a couple of shows and tried. But at least it was Terry Gordy, and people tried to kind of like, well, he is a big star thing, but he just couldn't really do it. But bring him in under a mask as the executioner. What an idea that was, you know, um, where you you don't get the benefit of the Terry Gordy name. All right, before we get to the raw review here, let's uh, talk Bellator. Well, Bellator is going to be doing its first show since the, um, you know, PFL took over. It'll be on Friday in uh, Belfast, Northern Ireland. And it's um, Carl Moore against Corey Anderson for the vacant light heavyweight title. And Patricio uh, Pitbull Ferre uh, defending the featherweight title against Jeremy Kennedy. The thing that's most interesting is here we are on Monday. The show is on Friday. And... Today, on Ariel Hawani's show, he said that in the next two days, they will announce, you know, the broadcast deal. And it's kind of like, isn't this a little late in the game to, like, wait? Like, you know what I mean? It's like if you're going to wait for a big day to announce your broadcast deal, shouldn't you probably have done that like a week ago? You know what I mean? When you when you are saying that, uh, you know, in a few days, we're going to announce a broadcast deal... Well, that tells me you don't have a broadcast. No, deal no, right no. Now. He, he said he said the, he said he knows who it is, and he said that he's going to wait for them to announce it, and that the announcement will come on either Tuesday or Wednesday. Why in the hell would you not announce it today? If You're you telling actu- me if you actually have it in the shows this weekend. What are you waiting for? No kidding. I don't know, man. And and here's the other thing too is like, what's the deal that you don't? Have, you know what I mean? It's like, shouldn't you have this deal locked up a month ago? Well, yeah, you should. You know. I mean, well, anyway, so um, the only thing he said was it was someone new to the game. So I guess that means no ESPN. Um, um, I don't know who else would be new to the game. I don't think Fox Sports 1 would be considered new to the game. So um, I don't know. Maybe it's a streaming service. But there will be a, an announcement in the next two days of this mm. uh, show on a... Friday at, at uh, the main show's Friday at 3 p.m. Eastern, noon Pacific. So it's not like, no matter where it is, it's not like it's going to do any big numbers or anything. But um, it's it's there and it's alive, I guess is all you can say. All right. Well, we had a Raw show, and we were only three weeks away from WrestleMania. And the one thing I'll say about the show is there was a lot of talking on this show. A lot of well, interviews. That's, that's, that's what. That's what. That's you know. What's funny is 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 um, WWE. You know, AEW is having more and more talking as well. But WWE 
it's like for the last i mean i i just think that's the show now is that they just do lots and lots and lots of talking and it's you know if you have good talkers that's not a bad thing but it's one segment after another you know because they have all these wrestlemania angles that they're trying to get over and it's the biggest time of the year and you know you know the thing also is well i mean with wrestlemania they do have essentially two pay-per-views to promote because you're doing two shows back to back, yeah, and we're talking what's going to be like become pre-show nine matches on each show. Probably, I don't know. That, I don't. I don't know that they'll do uh, pre-show matches, but I mean, probably seven to eight on each show. So you're talking at least fifteen, sixteen matches is most likely. Yeah, I, but I, but all it's the big, to promote. Yeah, but all the, I think all the big matches are already out there. Other than they may add Chad Gable to that match. I don't know that they will or won't. Um, but everything else, I think it's pretty much out there other than, you know, they'll, they'll, they'll add two or three and there's going to be the, probably the Andre Battle Royal on SmackDown the night before or maybe on the thing and maybe something. I figure that like all the women may be in the tag team, you know, like a multiple tag team thing, but who knows? Um, I should probably actually ask. Well, here is the card. We have, uh, we have 10 matches. We know for sure on night one it is Rock and Roman Reigns versus Cody and Seth Rollins. Yeah. And we know for sure night two is Seth versus Drew and Roman versus Cody. The rest of them, we don't have a night yet, but we've got Rhea Ripley versus Becky Lynch for the women's title, Io Sky versus Bailey for the women's title, Gunther versus Sami Zayn for the Intercontinental title. We've got Finn Balor and Damian Priest versus... At this point, DIY, Awesome Truth, New Day, and whoever the final two teams from SmackDown will be. Logan Paul versus Kevin Owens and Randy Orton in a three-way. Jay versus Jimmy and LA Knight versus AJ Styles. So, yeah, there's still matches to be added here. There's a lot yeah. of people that have nothing to do at this point. Yeah, but all the top guys are pretty much covered now. Yes. The, um, You know, the most interesting thing is the biggest match that, when if you watch the promos... It's the Rock against Cody Rhodes, and it's well, not even a match. Well, I mean, it's, it's kind like, of a match. They're they're facing. Well, I mean, each they're in a ta- tag. They're in they're in a tag, but it's like Roman Reigns has become. I mean, Roman Reigns is only significant because he's the champion for Cody to to beat. But the Rock is the opponent, and for the Rock, you know, it's like Seth Rollins is there, you know, and he makes fun of him. But it's like, you know, his promo was what eighty percent Cody, twenty percent Seth, maybe. Oh, it was all Cody. Yeah. Was, he talked more about Cody's mother than Seth. Probably. Yeah. Yes. But he wouldn't, you know, Cody wouldn't say anything bad about Rock's mother, though. Couldn't bring himself to it even to take it, the feud. It was funny because he, 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 well, we'll get to it. We'll get to it here in a moment. But it opened with Jay and Jimmy. And uh, Jay came down to the ring. He called out Jimmy. And Jimmy just got in the ring and they talked about being brothers. And, and Jay said, you know, I, I want you to just come back. And Jimmy says, listen. I'm not the guy who left. You left the bloodline. You went off to become tag team champions without me. Who left who? He said, everything you did in your career that was ever big was because of your big brother, me. And so, listen, loud and clear, your biggest moment is going to be because of me. And Jay said, actually, my biggest moment is going to be my dream match, WrestleMania 40, me versus you. I'm going to knock your ass out. And the fans went crazy. Uh, he decked Jimmy, Solo attacked him, Jimmy laid out Jay with a super kick, Cody ran down to the ring, and uh, presumably on one of these TVs before Mania, it's going to be Cody and Jay versus Jimmy and Solo. I thought that they were going to do that match tonight. Well, it sounds like SmackDown or next week's Raw or, or at some point here. It would, you, you would think so. Yeah. We had Adam Pearce screaming at Aldis about what had just happened with these SmackDown guys ruining his show, and Paul Heyman showed up and he said, I'm sorry... What happened was not authorized by Roman. Roman promises he's a man of his word. These guys have left. You will not see them again the rest of this night. I have business I got to attend to tonight. And then when I'm gone, I'll be gone. You know, he, he we didn't see them again the rest of the night. No, no. Yeah. Because it was very important. To, it was very important on this show to get over the idea that Roman is a an honest man. Yeah, because you know, Roman when, is promising that there will be nobody from the bloodline during the face to face with Cody on Friday. But you could tell when 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 Cody Rhodes accepted Heyman's uh, stipulation of don't bring anyone, the whole crowd was just like, "You're a dumb shit." You could just well, tell we'll that find deal. out. I yeah. don't think they're going to position Cody as a dumb shit. 
Well, if, if we'll they don't, see. if if no one runs in, I mean, if then he's okay, but if they all run in, it's kind of hard not to, because everyone in the crowd expects everyone to run in on him, and all night, you know, when Jay and Seth wanted to help him, and he said no, and you know, like when when that happens in wrestling, most of the time, probably eight times out of ten, if not nine times out of ten, the baby face ends up being the dumb shit for for not. Um, for telling it for you know I, I can get this on my own i don't want your help and then 10 guys jump them we had the first of the qualifying matches for the ladder match it was the creeds versus diy and uh it's a good match in its own weird way well yeah so the first half of the match was was it was mostly just here are the awesome things the creeds can do like Julius does the kettlebell get up with a guy in a vertical suplex. Yeah, you know is, what? I, I, I watch that thing again. He it, it, when he when he tr- did that move, I was scared to death for him because his knee went was bent at a terrible angle. I mean, if he he it may have been like he he didn't quite get him, and usually he does because he's never I've never seen him do it before where it looked dangerous. But this looked pretty dangerous. I mean, when he was starting to get up and kind of lost it and his knee was going out, I go, oh, God, this is going to be another Rick Boogs and he's going to be out for a while. It's It looks so impressive and it's cool that you can do it. But, um, you know, I mean, Boogs could do it and then until he didn't. You know what I mean? It It's, um, I don't know. I mean, I mean, it, it, it scared me watching it. That's, you know, because it's not worth the injury. Well, yeah, they did a lot of stuff like that and it was, you know, not all perfect. There was some sloppiness, but they did two hot tags. There's, there's always there's always that in a Creed's match. They did two every, hot tags. Every Creed's match, it's like really impressive stuff and stuff that just uh, doesn't work perfectly. So the second hot tag was to Gargano, and once Gargano made that second hot tag, this match became quite great, actually. And lots of near falls, lots of big moves, and finally... Uh, Brutus tried the Brutus ball. Ciampa did a victory roll to counter it. They traded cradles, and Ciampa pinned Julius. So for the first time ever, DIY goes to WrestleMania. And, uh, you know, the other thing about this match in particular, the production on this show is vastly Oh, yeah, it is really, vastly really, improved. Really. And they had, they had a segment that we're going to get to with uh, Sammy and Gunther where Sammy Zayn storms out of the ring and it's one like two minute continuous shot there are no camera cuts the camera follows sammy as he leaves the ring it follows him all the way up the aisle it follows him through the curtain it follows him all the way backstage and there are our truth and miz and diy and they're talking about the next match and they they just like they keep the camera on them and they go to the angle with those guys and then Miz and Truth, they start walking in the ring. The camera follows them, goes all the way back out and down to the ring and follows their entire entrance. One continuous, like, they didn't cut the camera. It was a continuous shot for, like, two straight minutes. It was so great, that shot. And uh, in this match, there was one weird moment of, I don't know if it's just what they do now or whatever, but they used to always go, Raw rolls on! And they go to commercial. They're doing this this spot, and they're like right in the middle of a brawl, and all of a sudden I'm watching a commercial. They didn't say, we'll be right back. They didn't say, Raw rolls no, on. No, no, okay. But, they didn't but, say anything. They just were gone. No, no. They, they, they pitched to it like about 25 seconds, I would say, earlier, and then they went quiet. <laughs> yeah. For whatever they were. They, but they, they, they pitched to it, but they... At the end, but the yeah, timing they, was completely off. Yeah, the timing was so off. So by the time they went to commercial, it was like, what the hell just happened? Well, what happened was, is I think that that they were supposed to, the wrestlers were supposed to be at a certain point, and they hadn't gotten to the point yet. That's, well, that's all. the announcers were pitching it, but they were slow in getting to the point where I. That's how I viewed it anyway. But well, there was another one on SmackDown where, uh, you know, before they go to commercial, there's always like the Bay Phase run wild. They do the big dive. They they wipe them out, and then the announcer goes. Uh, Ah, they may be going to WrestleMania, and that's when they go to the break. So I can't remember what match it was on SmackDown, but the Bayface do the big dive, they hit the thing, and Corey Graves goes, so and so may make it to WrestleMania. And there's a long pause, and the guys just keep wrestling. It was the same, it was the same thing. It was the exactly. same thing. Like they, they did the this spot thing. they always do to go to commercial, and Corey is so used to pitching the commercial that he pitched a commercial, but that wasn't where they were going to commercial. So that was wacky. Yeah. So well, you know, you got to get I know, I mean, system. I, I don't know. I mean, like, 
to me, it's like, you know, the creeds could be special, but they're certainly not treating them like that at all. They're just treating them like, here's two well, they, guys. Well, they've that, vanished for a month. We haven't even seen them for a month. I know. It's like, I think the whole deal was is that they got to pay their dues like everybody else. The problem with that is, is that you don't make anybody special when you make them pay their dues first. You know, it's like when... Brother, when the whole point of NXT is to pay your dues. But once you go up to the main roster, those dues have been paid. And well, if they haven't, they should have been pulled up. Well, yeah, yeah. I, 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 this is what I would say is, is like, if they weren't, if they weren't ready to go hard with them. By the way, speaking of that, whatever happened to Braun Breaker? Well, he's got to finish his deal in uh, in NXT. Yeah, but he signed and everything he's, like that. He's he did been it. called up. Yeah, he did. He did a squash match and then he disappeared. Yeah, he'll be back. Well, I know, but it's like, it's, why start him? If, if you're going to then make him disappear for a month. He should have started the night after Mania. Yeah, but I mean, with these guys, it's like, if they were not ready, they didn't need to be up. And if they're up, they should, they you know, like with Braun Breaker, they should just go with them. You know, I mean, they, you know, I mean, Gargano and Ciampa, sure, these guys are great wrestlers. But, you know, it's like the Creed's in theory, had the chance to be... I mean, look, those guys in NXT were telling me forever, you know, it's like Julius Creed's going to be a main event or he's going to main event WrestleMania someday, which whether he will or whether he won't, I don't know. Um, but if there is the belief that he will, starting him out and doing nothing with him for a long time is probably not the way to go, you know, and just like making him, you know, whatever. It's like, oh, yeah, they got time. It's like, yeah, but if you... Some people you want to make somebody you want to make some people special. If you make nobody special, you know, then they're just a bunch of widgets, you know. And I mean, that's the whole key of wrestling is is some guys, you know, you you got you got to make main eventers. You know, it's like if everyone's irreplaceable, uh, then you don't got main eventers. You got a bunch of wrestlers, and wrestling thrives. I shouldn't say it's too bad because wrestling's obviously thriving, and they got main eventers. Yeah, right I was gonna now. say they got they got plenty of main eventers. Right they got now. plenty of main eventers right now, but but. They're not going to make new ones if they um, keep them down. We had Jay meeting with Cody, and he said, don't go to SmackDown alone. And Cody says, I gave my word. And Jay said, you know, the entire bloodline is going to be there. And he says, if you need me Friday, I'm there for you. We had Rick Shea and Dirty Dom. So Rick Shea beat him. Uh, hit the uh, recoil after avoiding the 619, pinned him. And they kind of usually sort of protect Dom, so this kind of came out of nowhere. The story is Ricochet is going through the Judgment Day one by one. And so next week he's got JD, who got laid out after this match. Sammy met with Chad Gable backstage. Sammy goes, hey, great job last week. Could have gone either way. You pushed me. Man, it was an honor. Chad goes, yeah, whatever. And Sammy says, are you all right? Gable says, I'm fine. And Sammy says, I know you're not fine. What's going on? And Gable said, last week, this opportunity, this WrestleMania, this whole thing to me, it just means more. And Sammy says, listen, I've been hearing you say that for weeks, and it's unfair. And then the, you're the only one this matters more to. i got a family at home. My kid cries when I lose. I let friends down. I've let family down. You don't know what this means to me. And Chad says, I know all of that, but it's not about that. And Sammy says, well, what's this all about then? And Chad says, you can't beat Gunther. He walks off, and Sammy is stunned. We've had him pierce in the ring for the contract signing, and both guys cut a promo. Sammy, of course, vows to win the title. Said, if you'd ask the Usos, you know, I, I ended their record-setting title reign. I'm going to do the same thing to you at WrestleMania. And then Gunther says, why don't you ask your friend Chad? He doesn't think you can beat me. These fans don't think you can beat me. If you're honest with yourself, you don't think you can beat me. So keep dreaming. Because your dreams are going to meet reality at summer at uh, WrestleMania, so he signs. Yeah, he uh, made fun of uh, Sammy's clothes. Yeah, I said, "Why are you dressed like one of these fans?" Yeah. So as he's leaving, Sammy grabs the mic and he says, "Look in my eyes. You don't think I believe? Well, take a long look because you're looking at the guy who's going to take you down at WrestleMania." So that's when they did the one long shot. Storms backstage. There's Miz and Truth. They're getting ready for their tag match. Indu Cher walks up. Truth says, man, I feel bad for the guys that have to face them. And DIY is trying to smarten him up, and Miz says, don't worry, I'll, I'll do it. And he goes, let's go, Truth. And they walk through the curtain, they do the whole entrance all the way down to the ring, and they start the match. It was great. The match itself, 
Not great. No. God, this match. What, what, would, what would I mean? What would you think? Well, I mean, what would you think? It's, it's like, they had an idea on paper, which was Sangha gets yanked outside. As he's falling down, he accidentally elbows Truth, who falls on top of Veer and pins him. Yeah. And like, I don't care what you wrote on paper. This sucked in execution. This match sucked. Just terrible. I didn't think it sucked, but it wasn't. I didn't think it was good either. Um, but what do you? You know, I mean, Sangha. Sangha. It's like he's big, but he's just. That's all he is. Is he's just big. He never really progressed past a certain point, and um, you know, I mean, our truth is 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 in his fifties. He's in good shape for his age, for sure. Um, and Miz is Miz. You know, it's like. Uh, you know, it was funny when they were they were chanting "Let's go, Miz," and Corey Graves was, "They never do that." And it's kind of like this guy's been a babyface for a while. I'm not sure you should point that out. You know that they never chant "Let's go, Miz." We had Sammy running in a Chad Gable backstage. It was Pat McAfee. Pat what? McAfee said that. Yeah, not Corey Graves. Sammy ran into Chad. I'm sorry. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Gable backstage. Amanda know why Chad thought he couldn't beat Gunther, and Chad says, "Look what just happened." It's mental with Gunther. You've made a career out of being an underdog, but Gunther's on a different level. There is no window of opportunity with this guy. He's a different animal. If you don't change your mentality, you can't beat him. And he storms off, and Sammy has a lot of thinking to do. CM Punk's on Raw next Monday. He vows to be at WrestleMania. Why, you ask? Because it's in Philadelphia, and he's Phil. Well, that means he that has is to screw- what he said. That means he has to screw McIntyre. Yeah, well, he could. Yeah, he could screw Mc- McIntyre. I thought McIntyre was going to win the title until then. But yeah, if he's there, I well, mean- he could try to screw McIntyre. He could. He's not ready Wait. to come back yet. Is the problem? Yeah, uh, you know what? He could try to screw McIntyre and end up screwing Seth because because the the angle originally was Seth and him. Yeah, yeah. We had uh, Drew coming down to the ring. Seth's music hits. He comes down. They had a long promo. Seth admits he's a spotlight junkie. Drew makes fun of him, his outfits, all this stupid shit. Why do you take why don't you take anything seriously? Seth tells him to shut up, says it's not a joke. We've both been doing this for twenty years. I need this spotlight. I was not exaggerating, I'm a spotlight junkie. He goes, I'll tell you exactly what's gonna happen. Night one of WrestleMania, I'm gonna take out the biggest star in Hollywood. Night two, it'll be you and me for the world title. And Drew says, well, I like the passion, but why does it have to be about the biggest star in Hollywood? Why can't it just be about you and me for this title? He says, at WrestleMania, I'm not getting the moment I deserve. I'm going to get the moment I bloody earned. And Seth said, you call me a spotlight junkie, but you're begging for the spotlight. You've been begging for four years. He says, you cry about the empty warehouse you won the title in, how it wasn't good enough. But what happened when the fans returned? You fumbled the ball. And he vowed to shine bright at WrestleMania. I mean, it was a good segment. Both guys did a good job. But at this point, I was like, how much talking is on this show? I've seen three long talking segments. Yeah, that freaking Cody Rhodes. The Cody Rhodes-Paul Heyman thing was the longest of all of them, wasn't it? Did I skip that whole thing? Where am I here? You probably you probably did. That was, Damn, that, that was is really it? long. Jiminy Christmas. How did I skip that whole thing? Oh, my God, I skipped half the show. Oh, because I skipped forward for the... uh, Okay. So, uh, well, we'll go backwards here a little bit. We had Judgment Day and Andrade, and they talked to Andrade, and Andrade has a match next week. They vowed to keep an eye on him, and uh, that's when they made fun of JD for not beating Ricochet, and then Rhea uh, volunteered Dom. So that was that. Then we had Candice and Indy versus Kane and Katana, and they did that stupid thing where... Katana flips over, and she acts like she blew out her knee, and the ref stops the match. So everyone stop, get back, got to check on her. It's like the match is still on. Like, is it on or is it off? So he's yeah. checking on her, and uh, Candace ends up drop-kicking uh, Caden outside. She posts Katana's leg, puts her in half crab, and submits her. And Indy's appalled that she attacked an injured woman. Isn't that, like, just basic wrestling? Well, if the match is on, right? Yeah. I mean, if if the match is stopped and the referee stopped it and then she tortures her because the match is over, that's a heel move, right? For sure. Yes. Okay. 
if the match is on and the referee doesn't stop it and someone has an injured body part, isn't that what wrestling has been about for the last hundred years? Well, sure, but in theory, the referee told everyone to back off, and she attacked the injured woman anyway. So you stopped the match. Well, he should have stopped the match. It was the referee's fault this all happened. I mean, it's like, it's like okay, you, you either decure or you stop or you stopped the match and ruled in the win. Like, it's like, how is this being a heel? And then Indy's all mad that they won. Yeah. It made no sense at well, all. Well, you know, I mean, Indy could be going heel as well. She needs something to do. Well, I mean, Candace is, is already heel. Yes, so. Candace is full heel. Yeah. So, yeah, so we had the Cody promo, and this guy's got to do a rebuttal to The Rock, who's just killing it. Yeah. And I will say so, I thought Cody did a very good job. He did. The they story gave, of this uh, was, they gave, I don't they, buy that fucking memo for a second, Dave. There was a memo. But I, mean, I think it's bullshit. No, there was, there was a memo. Everyone got it. But Cody, they gave... They gave Cody, um, Cody was, because I, I asked, I go like, you know, what was the deal? And it's like, they, you know, they, um, they knew that he had to come back. But there's ab absolutely a memo. I got that from several different guys. Well. And there's been, and there's been other reporters who had it too. Cody. So it's not, that's not a, that's not a nothing, you know. I mean, and no one else is allowed to do, you know, no one else is allowed to do that. But he was given. He was given the opportunity to do it because basically they didn't want him to, you know, they wanted him to stay babyface, essentially. And, um, you know, I mean, if if he came off badly on this promo and Rock came off so great in Memphis, you know, it's like that's not what they want. You know, I mean, but he was fine. You know, he's he brought his dog. You know what I mean? It's like that's, that's all the little Dude, this guy there. came out. He was cheered like crazy before he said a word. And then he says, Rock called himself a heel, but he goes, that means you're a bad guy. But you know what? I've known some heels, and you're not a heel. You're just an asshole. And he says, I know there's no crying in wrestling, but didn't you cry to the board? Didn't you cry about this match getting changed? And he did says... He, did he? Well, I mean... I don't think he really did. He said, behind the scenes. Well, he, he said, the TKO board gives you everything there. Wait, 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 wait a minute. Okay. He he, the change he asked for was for Cody to be in the main event. I mean, it's like if it wasn't for that, he you know what I mean. It's like his crying to the board was putting Cody in the main event. We're telling the story here. Okay, I'm just I'm telling. I'm telling the story. He said you're a lot of things, but what you are is a terrible salesman, a whiny bitch. He says, and then he goes, "I know you've been convinced otherwise." But don't think for two seconds the locker room needs you more than you need them. And I know your mother, he says. And here's what I'm going to say about her. And I thought, oh my God, he's going to say that she's like a great woman, but she was a terrible promoter and doesn't deserve to be in the Hall of Fame. But That's he did not say that. That's his grandmother. So his grandmother. Yes. Yeah, well, his mother. His mother. His mother was never a promoter. Well, one except way other. Except in Young Rock. They, they well, he was. That's right. In Young Rock, they created a storyline that that they ran opposition to the grandmother, even though that never happened. But he said, "Here's what I'm going to say about your mother." Oh, she's wonderful. Yeah, I respect her. But you know what? My mother. She's not going to be intimidated by your stupid belt. Yeah, he he's, claims he's, that his mother knocked out a undercover cop at a Willie Nelson concert. Well, maybe. That's what he said. Yeah. Well, Dwayne's mom's actually super nice. And then he said, you've been in the ring. You haven't been in the ring in years. April 6th, the bell is going to ring. Are you going to have big Dwayne energy or are you going to have little dick syndrome? Mm -hmm. He said that uh, you call yourself they got the, the they final got, boss. They got the, they got the fans to chant LDS. Actually, they chanted little dick syndrome is what they chanted. Yeah. Yeah. And then he said, kudos to Brian Gewertz. Perhaps you are the final boss. But I think you're just Roman's side chick. And the place did go nuts for this promo. Yeah. So uh, he did a hell of a job. And then Paul comes out. And long story short, the agreement is, well, on SmackDown, it's going to be one-on-one. -on -one. Roman promises. But you have to promise that you're not going to bring anybody. And Cody agreed. So uh, then scooting back to where we were, we had... Well, you know, Nia and Jax did a promo. Nia and Becky both did promos for tonight. Then we had New Day versus Otis and Tozawa qualifying match <clears throat> for the tag title match, the ladder match. And uh, Kofi gave Otis a tornado DDT, Woods hit a spiral powerbomb, pointed at the sign, did the rope walk, flying elbow, got the pin. New Day 
is going to WrestleMania, mm-hmm. but not poor Otis and Tozawa. Then uh, Liv said tonight, Nia was all hers. Make sure you kick her ass. Seth told Cody, are you sure it's one-on-one? Cody said, yep, one-on-one. And then the main event, Nia Jax, Becky Lynch, last man standing. And I thought they had a very good match. Very good match, And yeah. I don't think I have ever seen a Nia Jax match where she was so going out of her way to be safe. I mean... Oh, she had to. She, if she was if she, if she wrestling she an egg... Is what she, she was doing. If she would have hurt Becky Lynch, that would have been the that would have been horrendous at this stage. And you know what's funny is the last match they had, they had uh, they had two spots that completely sucked. One was when Becky drop kicked Nia, and Nia sold it so bad that the announcers thought that Becky missed, even though she didn't. And then when Nia tried to give her the Samoan drop into the post, and she wasn't looking, and she missed the post, and Becky just got thrown on the ground. I swear to God, those two spots were the very first spots they redid in this match. The first spot was Becky doing the drop kick off the top. Nia sold it way better and bumped outside. And then Nia grabbed her for the uh, Simone drop in the post. Hit post it perfectly. Then another, and then did another one into the barricade. Did it exactly as she was supposed to so that she corrected her two botched spots from the last match. And then like everything she did. like To the point where... Her chair shots and cane shots were so light that it actually was too light. It actually looked fake. But she was doing everything in her power to not hurt anybody in this match. And then at the end, got to give her credit, they did a manhandled slam off the apron through a table, and she took a total flat back, crashed on the floor, big bump, which was not the finish, by the way. And then she crawled over to the table, and Becky did a leg drop off the ladder, put her through the announce table, and uh, Knight did not make it up that time, so Becky won. And it was a it was a very good main event. And then uh, Rhea came out and had the stare down with Becky as the show went off the air. And as far as, like, focused build to WrestleMania, I mean, talking or no talking, however much there was, they did a great job on this show, building up these matches. Oh, yeah, yeah, they made the, the key matches important and, uh, you know, got the teams in there for the tag title and and all that, too. So, yeah. All right, uh, a couple of other notes here. NXT is tomorrow. They've added an interview with Tony D, who's getting the title shot over Mania Weekend. Truck Williams, Noam Dar. We have tag team qualifiers with Gallows and Anderson versus Hank and Tank and Axiom and Nathan Frazier versus the No Quarter Catch crew. Riley Osborne so, versus... So we're, so we're having tag team qualifiers on NXT, Raw, and SmackDown all yes. at the same time. yes. Yeah, okay. And for Raw, it is the winner just goes to WrestleMania. SmackDown is a mini tournament yeah. where the people are winning a tournament match to get into a match to find out if they go to WrestleMania. Yeah. So if you're confused, join the club. Riley Osborne versus one member of the No Quarter Catch crew. We got Roxanne versus Tatum. Sol Ruka versus Brinley Reese. That's been added. And Oba Femi and Tony D will both do interviews. And then for the Toronto Dynamite on Wednesday, Christian versus Adam Copeland TNT title, Eddie Kingston versus Okada for the Continental title, Dion and Thunder Rosa versus Tony and Mariah May, Jericho versus Hook, and there will be an appearance from Mercedes Monet. So that's the lineup for the show. I don't think they had anything today. Mm, I didn't hear anything. So there you go. Yeah. All right. Um couple of uh, mailbag questions before we wrap it up. This person is not a fan of New Japan of late. And <laughs> he says, these shows with the ref bumps, interference in every match House are of awful. Tor- House of Torture. I mean, there's, there, it's like over and over again. It's like way overdone. He wants Ghetto replaced. Well, I don't know. That's going to happen. Would you say it's not that bad yet? Oh, I wouldn't say that, but I'm just saying it's not probably not going to happen. This person here says, "Do we know for sure that Jack Perry was not fired by AEW? Has anyone asked? He has not been. Fired I have by asked, AEW. and he has not been fired. He has absolutely not been fired, but they're not using him. Um, essentially, um, he's just iced. Tony's really mad at him because he cost him CM Punk." And he's getting the blame. And, you know, after, you know, I mean, he he probably should have been suspended for 
a month or two. Where, where are we at? Seven months now? Uh, it would have been August. So September, Mar- October, it- November, December, January, February, March. Yeah, seven months. Seven months. It's ridiculous. Punishment doesn't fit the crime um, at this point. Um, and I mean, it's like it's like it's it's his fault because the other guy like lost his mind. I was going to say, I mean, he didn't cost Tony CM Punk. CM Punk cost Tony CM Punk by getting into a fight over this. Over over something that should have been like, you know, it, 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 you know what? Punk could have just got to Tony and said, suspend this dude. That was unprofessional. That would have been it. Right? Could have. He could have. He yeah. could have. But it was such a nothing. You know what I mean? It's like it's like none of it should have happened because the fact is is that it wouldn't have happened with Jack Perry if Punk didn't start the thing in the first place. You know, and it's like, you know, yell at him over something that had already been wouldn't it you know, it had already been approved. I mean, it's like they brought the glass, right? The glass it wasn't like this. They guy, got the car. They got the car. You know what I mean? He it's was like, given approval to do it. They had the car. It was all ready to go. Yeah. I mean, and then Punk said not doing it. So yeah. This person here says, during Hogan's initial WWE title run, who were the top draws on shows that Hogan did not work? Um, I mean, after Hogan, I mean, Andre the Giant was, was a draw. As time went on, Randy Savage became a big, big draw. Roddy Piper was probably the biggest other draw. Um, Sergeant Slaughter in the first year was a good draw. Um, so those would have been uh, Jimmy Snuka, um, especially in the Northeast. So those would have been some of the bigger draws, yeah. This person here says, how were Teton and Penta both on collision on Saturday? Because the, one of them didn't wrestle. Uh, uh, which one? was P- Penta didn't wrestle, and it was one of those things where they had to do it because they had to set up the six-man tag and all that. So it was one of those situations where, you know, it's like it's a rule, but if there's no way around it, you know, CMLL is not like they're not like um, you can't do this. It's just like, please don't do this. But it's like in the situation they wanted to set up that six man tag. So and it was the only show they could. So that's what happened. But, you know, he could not. Penta was not allowed to wrestle on that show. It's really interesting because that may be why, um, you know, Penta and um, none of the former, you know, the non, you know, Roosh or any of those guys are in the tag team tournament because if they get any CMLL guys up, then, and they're in the middle of the tournament, they wouldn't be able to do those matches on the same night. And the CMLL guys, it appears to me that a lot of that is last minute stuff because they didn't, you know, um, they had Mystico in Atlanta and didn't even advertise them. So that had, and, you know, Mystico in Atlanta is a draw. So it's kind of like, um, it just feels to me that like a lot of the CMLL stuff is, is done late in the game and it's, it's a mess. I mean, it, it shouldn't, there even shouldn't really be a problem, but, you know, CMLL is, you know, that's just, that's just their directives and, you know, that's Tony agreed to them. So, yeah. Person here says, with TKO now owning WWE and with streaming services, deplatforming older shows that do not get as many streams, do you think they would ever consider selling tape libraries of territories that don't get a lot of streams? AWA, Mid South, even WCW? No. And who's going to buy them? I think I think they, you you could maybe get an owner for WCW, but I'm not sure about uh, some of the other ones. But they're not going to sell them, so it doesn't matter. I mean, I guess if you offered enough money, they might, but they're not going to sell them. All righty, this person here says, uh, "Do you think that CM Punk would still be in AEW if the Bucks and the Elite had gone to WWE instead of re-signing when their contracts were up?" Yes. Not a hundred percent, yes, because that still there still could have been problems. Because again, like Jungle Boy was a different problem, and still could have it still could have gone exactly the same, honestly. But um, I think so. I think so. I think that when I actually believe that when they signed, that it was um, you know, it was it was it 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 changed it changed the dynamic. Yeah, I think that he thought that you know. 
that's, you know, he was going to win that fight. And, you know, Tony wasn't going to let anyone win that fight. It was going to be, he was going to be nice to both sides and try to pretend that there was no, pro well, no, I don't try to pretend, but, you know, given their two different shows where they're just going to keep them apart. And so, therefore, he doesn't have to address the issue. And, I mean, that not addressing the issue, I mean, we had, uh, let's see, it was like February 2022 until um, end of August 2023 without ever fully addressing the issue. And the inevitability was is that that couldn't go on forever. All right, everybody. On that note, we're going to wrap it up for today. New Observer's up on the front page. New back issue. Dave and I were up yesterday, and we'll be up again on Wednesday. AWNXT, all of the news. Lots of stuff up on the front page. Yeah, three, three, three hours of... Uh, That's right. Dynamite uh, and Rampage. Three hours of AW, yeah, yeah. Back to back on Wednesday. So we'll talk about that and all the news. And uh, that's it. We'll talk to you again after a while.